Hey, I just want to show you what I've got in my pandemic preps and go over, you know, what I have and why I have it. Um, maybe I can get some feedback on what I need, what I shouldn't get, and, and so forth. But uh, with all this Ebola talk, you know, I've um, been pulling it out and buying some more stuff and, um, you know, reevaluating what I got. One thing I've, I've just recently got is I bought some trash bags. Um, I think that's going to be hard to get if things kind of go south in a pandemic. Um, you know, I, I seen the, the article recently on CNN of the gal in um, Africa, and she took care of her family members who were sick, and she wore trash bags. She um, there was she had four family members. Uh, one of them died. Three of them lived. They put her at a 25% success rate and uh, she never caught it and she was a nursing student she understood you know about the viruses and germs and how to protect herself and she used trash bags every day to cover herself trash bags will also be good for putting um you know your dirty clothes in is anything that you think might have gotten um infected or you know contaminated to put waste in so some trash bags. One thing I want to get some smaller trash bags. These are kind of big. Um, if you're going to make like boots with trash bags, cover your feet. You, you know, I don't need 50 gallon trash bags for that. And I'm going to get some clear trash bags. So if I do have, you know, some clothing or something like that, bed sheets that have been contaminated, I can put them in a clear plastic bag and you can kind of see what's in it as well. Um, another thing is bleach. Um, there's places they say in Africa where you can't get bleach now. Um, you need bleach to disinfect, uh, disinfect your clothes, your home, your dishes, anything like that. We got some spray disinfectant. Um, had that a while. It's you know for flu viruses pretty much. One thing about Ebola, I see there's a lot of just BS information going on out there, and uh, information is going to be one thing you know you really need. Um, you know, I, I've heard a lot of reports and people repeating it that vitamin C will help you, will help Ebola. Well, I mean, vitamin C is something I take. If, if the flu was going around, if I thought I had the flu, I would take it. Um, i tell you the truth, if I thought I had Ebola, I would take it too. I don't know if it would help me or not, but, you know, vitamin C is something that I keep on hand. And if I was in a quarantine situation, I would take vitamin C. I would take garlic too. That's something that I use to help fight colds. And I've never heard anything about e uh, garlic helping Ebola, but it's, you know, it's what I do. It's what I'm using. I wouldn't use it. I don't know if it would help the Ebola virus, but if it would give me even the, the mental edge to fight it, I'll take it. And if I was in a quarantine situation, I would rather eat healthy and try to fight something that you know even if I don't have it or not I, I, I might have it I would want to eat healthy and prepare for it instead of sitting around drinking sodas and eating pop tarts you know uh, I've heard um reports miso soup it is a constituent in miso soup that has been you know studied uh, for Ebola yeah you know it, I know people who would swear by miso soup for um colds and flu as well um, fava beans, it's the same constituent as in fava beans. So I went out, I bought some dried fava beans, and, you know, ain't no harm in eating fava beans if you're in a quarantine situation. Yeah, I'd cook them on up. Um, I got my, my gloves, I've got different types of gloves. There's a 50 pack, 50 pack, 100 pack. I figure, um, gloves, I probably go through gloves a lot. So I might even buy some more because <clears throat> those are, you know, disposable. Your mask are supposed to be disposable too. You know, if you think you got Ebola on your mask, you need to get rid of it, you know, pretty soon while it's while you can. Um, another thing for your gloves, your mask, any, you know, protective clothing, you need to educate yourself on how to put it on, how to take them off. That is, that is a very big thing. And, you don't wait till the last minute. Um, even with uh, respirators like this, 
you know, if you, especially if you got kids, and I had to read it. I had read all the uh, information that came with these, how, you know, how it's used, you know, directions and so forth, and, and get yourself accustomed to it. Uh, I got um, N95s for my respirators. I got some P100s. I got this mask. This was a little more of an expensive mask. It's got a respirator, but it's... It, seems like with the two straps that it would um, hook to your face pretty well. I got that to keep in my vehicle. A couple goggles and um, some plastic sheeting and some tape. I got duct tape too. I didn't lay that out. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much it. I'm also looking into like certain herbs that I, I can use to help you know just keep myself healthy i don't know if anything that's been said of any herbs that can actually fight ebola but looking for herbs that are you know native to the united states um milk thistle seed to help protect the liver is one good thing that i've come across even plantain good old plantain leaves not the plantain banana but to drink um some plantain leaves um burdock root as a blood cleanser even dandelion root um stuff to help your lungs and mucous membranes marshmallow root maybe even licorice root and i'm also thinking maybe um yarrow and comfort just because of how it stops bleeding and i, I don't know if anybody comes across any information about that i would like to know that i mean yarrow tea and some comfrey leaf tea you know to get that in you it will, to help stop all the internal bleeding I, I don't know i mean i've got i got yarrow leaves um don't have the flowers yet but um yeah yeah i got yarrow leaves but um yeah that that's one thing now another thing that i do you know i with colds and flu if i am ever around anybody who has the cold or the flu. One of the first things I will do, like if I'm at work and I go home, I will gargle with salt water, warm salt water. I will also give myself a, a nasal rinse with warm salt water. And I've heard a while back that, you know, this is with the flu virus and cold viruses, it enters your nose or your mouth and it, it gets in your throat pretty much. and right there it will uh, I don't know if the term is replicate or reproduce but it, it, it thrives in your throat in your nasal cavities and yeah, that's when you like you go to a doctor and they take a culture and they stick that swab back of your throat swab the back of your throat and then put in a petri dish because you know they can grow it because they get that virus that's from on the back of your throat and, and giving yourself a little um uh, salt water mouthwash is not going to knock it all out, but it will help nip it in the butt a little bit before it gets too bad. That's something I've always done. Um, I know if you, you know, too much salt water through the nasal passages can cause dryness, so you got to watch out with that. But I mean, I, I don't know if that would help with Ebola. I wouldn't, you know, you don't know where it entered your body or not. But that, that's one thing I do with the flu. And another thing I do, um, if I think I'm, if first, first time I'm feeling sick, I'm, I'm going to drink water. I'm going to get myself hydrated, as hydrated as, as I can. I'm also going to eat proteins, as much protein as I can put in me before I start throwing up, before I start becoming dehydrated, before the diarrhea sets in, and I'm quickly becoming dehydrated and I'm losing nutrients. Staying hydrated. Keeping your body hydrated on a cellular level is very important. Everybody knows the rules of three. Three days without without water, you're dead. And when you're laid out with a cold or flu, I mean, you can go easily two days with very little water, and and you're feeling like crap, you know. And your body's starting to shut down. You need to get hydrated. If you go to a hospital, they're gonna they're gonna knock you out or something to calm you down and stick an IV up your arm to keep you hydrated. If you're not in a situation where you can get to something like that, the only way you can get hydrated to keep water down, or well, the, the best way to get water in you, and people will laugh at this, but it is through an enema. You gotta stick it up your rear, doesn't sound nice, 
And it, it sounds horrible if you were in a Ebola situation. And, and man, I mean, if you were taking care of somebody, maybe they're, they're too heavy for you to move. Man, you're talking about a messy situation. But <clears throat> being hydrated could save somebody's life, especially if they haven't had nothing to drink in a couple days. Figure two days and, and you've been vomiting and diarrhea everything out. You're, you're not looking too good. You're not feeling too good. Um, I don't know if there's, you know, any sort of like herbal way to, you know, to give an enema. I'm sure that I've heard of herbal enemas. Um, but to get nutrients into somebody, to get protein into somebody. I tell you what, if you, if you gave yourself uh, an enema with a protein shake, my hat's off to you. You get some protein in you that way. But, um... Yeah, other than that, I mean, th this, this is what I got. You know, I don't have the Tyvek suits. I will use trash bags to cover myself because they are cheaper and more disposable. I can't afford to, this stuff right here it costs some money. Tell you that, like I said, this was 10 bucks. And, um, you know, these bags, I mean, I got a roll of these 18 bags here. This is 50 bags. Um, what is this? A 1.1 mil. These are thicker, I think. This is a, a, a two mil. You know, I'm gonna get some more bags. Like I said, I'm gonna you know add some more to it. Bleach. I'm gonna add more bleach to my stocks and keep that rotated. I, I really think that's a good idea for anyone to get because when it starts hitting the fan, bleach is gonna be hard to come by. It's gonna be hard to get. Uh, miso soup, but uh, you know, I haven't had it in a while. I come across the thing about the miso. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna get some, you know, it's not it's not bad um, And I, people swear by it for colds and flu so I'll add it into my pandemic products And this is instant. I haven't been able to find a canned soup This is a more of an instant too with noodles, you know, kind of like a Raymond, but they're not Raymond's but that type of setup But yeah, you know, let me know what you think about what I got here um, What I'm missing you know, am I just crazy? Is some of this stuff stupid to have? Um, one of the most important things I think is to have is to have a plan. I've got several plans in action. Um, don't forget stuff like with your, you know, this is my pandemic preps. Yeah, I've got food and water stored. You know, I don't know if I have enough, but that's going to be important too to keep you from having to leave the house to go get stuff that you need. I've got some medicines too. You know, anti-diarrhea, you know, anti-congestants and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, um, thanks for watching. You know, if you like it, give me a like. L let me know what you think. Uh, appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. Have a good one.